Welcome to the chapter of magnetism. Uh, here are 12 problems that are being worked out. And I'm also trying to give the theory related to these problems as and when they are worked out. So here is a question number one. In this question, what is the maximum force on an aluminum rod with a 0 0.100 microcoulomb charge that you pass between the poles of a 1.50 Tesla permanent magnet at a speed of 5.00 meter per second. In what direction is the force? So we are asked to find the maximum force on an aluminum rod which ha has a 0.1 microcoulomb charge. And this charge is passing between the poles of a permanent magnet whose strength is 1.50 Tesla. And it is passing at a speed of 5.00 meter per second. So we have the charge, we have the strength of the magnetic field and the speed. We are asked to find the force. In the second part, we are asked to find the direction of the force. The direction of the force, as you can see here, is given by the right hand rule. So, if the thumb gives the direction of the velocity, the fingers give the direction of the magnetic field, then the palm gives the direction of the force. And the force is calculated using the formula QVB sine theta where theta is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. And in this case, the question says what is the maximum force? And the force becomes maximum when the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. And because sine 90 becomes 1. Therefore, the maximum force is QVB, which is 0.1 times 10 to the negative 6 because it's in microcoulombs. And then you have the velocity as 5 and the magnetic field is 1.50. On substitution, we get 7.50 times 10 to the negative 7. A cosmic ray proton moving towards the Earth at 5.00 times 10 to the 7 meter per second experiences a magnetic force of 1.70 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. So the velocity of the proton is given and the force it experiences is, is given and we are asked to find the strength of the magnetic field if there is a 45 degrees angle between it and the proton's velocity. So in this problem, theta is not 90 degrees. In fact, theta is given as 45 degrees. We are asked to calculate the strength of the magnetic field. So the formula is the same as before. F is QVB sine theta. Make B the subject and substitute the values of force, charge, and velocity. Since it's a proton, it has the same charge as the electron which is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19. That's a charge. Velocity is 5.00 times 10 to the 7 and then sine 45. On substituting and calculating, we get 3, oh no, that's, that's, actually it's 3.00 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. The second part says, is this consistent? with the known strength of the Earth's magnetic field. Yes, it is, because the strength of the magnetic field on the Earth's surface is about 3.8 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And since these numbers are quite close to each other, it is consistent with the Earth's magnetic field. A cosmic ray electron moves at 7.0 5O times 10 to the 6 meter per second. Notice that it's moving really fast and moves perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic field at an altitude where the field strength is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. What is the radius of the circular path 
the electron follows. So when a charged particle enters a magnetic field at right angles to it, the particle may be compelled to move in a circular path. And whenever anything moves in a circular path, we know that the centripetal force has to act on it. So in this case, the centripetal force is provided by the force due to the magnetic field. So we know that the centripetal force is mass times velocity square divided by the radius. So we will set that equal to the magnetic force. Now you can see that the diagram represents the circular motion of the charged particle. The cross, the crosses here represent the back of an arrow. That means it is a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the screen and into it. All right, if you see a cross, it's a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the screen and into it. But if you see a dot, then that represents the tip of the arrow, which means the magnetic field is again perpendicular to the screen, but coming out of it. So that's the difference. So as long as the magnetic field is perpendicular to the velocity, which is this, the case here, the particle is compelled to move in a circular path. And so the centripetal force mv squared by r is equal to q times v times b, okay, which is the magnetic force. So when we rearrange, you know that one of the velocities will get cancelled with the square and you get the radius as mass times velocity by q times b. So now we need the mass of the electron which will be given. It's 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. The velocity of the electron here is given as 7.50 times 10 to the 6. 7.50 times 10 to the 6 in this case. And the charge of the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That's the charge of the electron multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field, which in this case is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 5. So the calculations give 4.27 meter as the radius of the circular path. In question 4, a velocity selector in a mass spectrometer uses a 0 0.100 Tesla magnetic field. What electric field strength is needed to select a speed of 4.00 times 10 to the 6 meter per second? And then B, what is the voltage between the plates if they are separated by 1.00 centimeter? First of all, we need to know what a velocity selector is. A velocity selector is an arrangement of an electric field and a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. So if the electric field is this way, the magnetic field is exactly perpendicular to it. And when a bunch of charged particles passes through that space where you have such a field or such two fields that are perpendicular, it's only a particular velocity of charged particles that will go through. All the other particles will be deflected either upwards or downwards because the force due to the electric and magnetic fields will not be balanced on them. But for a certain velocity, the electric field, the force due to the electric field and the force due to the magnetic field become equal and opposite. So the net force acting on such particles is zero and so they go, they pass through undeflected. So the primary idea in a velocity selector is that the forces acting on these particles are equal and opposite. So that's where we set up the formula. So this actually represents a spectrometer where this is the velocity selector as you can see here is a magnetic field which is 
into the plane of the screen as shown by the the crosses as explained before and then you have an electric field that is set up by two plates you see that this plate is positive and this plate is negative which means the electric field is from the positive to the negative so the electric field is in the plane of the screen in the plane of the screen while the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the screen so they are perpendicular to each other and in this case as explained the forces become equal this is the magnetic force this is the electric force set them equal to each other and make E the subject because we're asked to find the strength of the electric field all we need is the velocity and the strength of the magnetic field uh, you would have noticed that the Q's get cancelled on both sides so the velocity is 4.00 times 10 to the 6 and the magnetic field is 0 0.100 and you get the answer as 4.00 times 10 to the 5 volt per meter. In the B part, what is the voltage between the plates? Now, the strength of the electric field is the ratio of the voltage divided by the distance. It's the ratio of the voltage to the distance between the plates. So E is equal to V by D or voltage is E times D all right so where E is the strength of the electric field that we got just now so when you plug that in multiplied by the distance between the plates which has to be in meters so it's one centimeter which is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 2 meters so we get the answer as 4.00 times 10 to the 3 volt. The, quest, the next question, question number 5, reads a 0 0.750 meter long section of a cable carrying current to a car starter motor makes an angle of 60 degrees with the earth's magnetic field. What is the current when the wire experiences a force of 7.00 times 10 to the negative 3 newton? We'll look at the B part later, but in this A part, we have a current carrying conductor situated in a magnetic field. Here, it's the Earth's magnetic field. Whenever a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field, a force acts on it. And this force is given by the formula F is equal to I L B sine theta. I is the current flowing through the conductor, L is the length of the conductor, B is the strength of the magnetic field, and theta is the angle between the current and the magnetic field. So all of those quantities except the current are given, so rearrange to make current the subject. The force is 7.00 times 10 to the negative 3. The length of the conductor is 0.750. Strength of the magnetic field is 5.50 times 10 to the negative 5 times sine of 60 degrees. And when we do the calculations, we will get the current as 196 ampere. 100, oh, that's a big current. 196 ampere. In the B part, it says if you run the wire between the poles of a strong horseshoe magnet, as you can see in the diagram, subjecting 5.00 centimeter of fit to a 1.75 Tesla field. So that means it, the length that's within the poles is 5 centimeters. So the length within the poles is 5 centimeters. What force is exerted? So again the same formula, but this time we have to calculate the force. So make the force the subject. So the formula is ILB sine theta. Now the current we calculated from the previous part is 196 ampere. The length is now given as 5 centimeter, which is 0 0.05 meter times 1.75.
and when you calculate you get 17.1 newtons question number six what is the maximum torque on a 150 ton square loop of wire 18 centimeter on a side that carries a 50 ampere current in a 1.60 tesla field b what is the torque when theta is 10.9 degrees so this is an extension of a current carrying conductor kept in a magnetic field when we know a force acts on it but this is not a conductor as such it's not a straight conductor it's a rectangular loop or a square loop actually and its side is 18 centimeter its side is 18 centimeter the current carrying is given so here is a diagram that represents the torque acting on a loop so if you have that square loop we see that the force on one side is out of the screen the force on the other side is into the screen so you have this force this way the others force the other way so you see there is a torque acting on it which tends to rotate it all right so and the torque acting uh, tau that's the symbol for the torque is given by n i a b sine theta n sine theta or sine phi n is the number of turns i is the current a is the area of the coil b is the strength of the magnetic field and in this case uh, phi is 90 degrees because it says maximum torque uh, the torque becomes maximum when the angle is 90 degrees because then sine 90 becomes 1 therefore you just have to plug in the number of turns is 150 current is 50 area is 0.18 square because we need to change the centimeter into meter and the area is for a square it's just square of the length so it's 0.18 in meters square times 1.60 which gives 3 point I mean 389 Newton meter in the B part the angle changes and we're asked to find the torque so same thing except that theta is now 10.9 degrees so with phi as 10.9 degrees make the calculations again using the same formula torque is NIAB sine phi And we would get what I'm doing is I'm just taking 389 multiplying it with sine of 10.9 because NIAB already has uh, the value 389 so we get 73.5 Newton meter as the torque. 7 a 200 turn circular loop of radius 50 centimeter is vertical with its axis on an east-west line so this time it's a circular loop and it's 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 vertical it's kept vertical something like that circular loop and its axis is on an east west line so let's say that's the east west line you have the circular coil vertical this way a current of 100 amperes circulates clockwise in the loop when viewed from the east so if this is the east when you view from here the current is clockwise all right the current is clockwise the earth's field here is due north parallel to the ground so you have the current flowing you have the magnetic field so let me show you how this would look like strength of the earth's field is given and we are asked to find the direction and magnitude of the torque on the loop all right so the setup would be something uh, like I'm going to show you uh, we can calculate the torque and uh, we can prove that the torque is clockwise but first let me show you the setup so that's the uh, circular coil and as you can see the current is flowing clockwise like that when you view it from the east this is the east so that's the axis all right so that's the east and that's the west and that's the axis that is the magnetic field of the earth which is actually perpendicular to this axis so when you look at this point 
and apply the right hand rule you see that the magnetic field is this way the current here is flowing up and therefore the force acting on this loop at that point should be as shown while on the other at the other end which is here the current is going to be flowing downwards here and so the force would be exactly in the opposite direction so that's why it sets up a torque which tends to turn it in the clockwise direction now that is three dimensional so you need to try to understand that using the right hand rule so therefore the torque is clockwise and then we have to calculate the direction uh, which we have uh, already explained we have to now calculate the magnitude of the torque the magnitude of the torque is n i a b why because the angle phi is 90 degrees number of turns is 200 the current flowing is 100 and then area is pi r squared where that means you have to take the radius in meters 50 centimeters 0.5 so that's why you have 0.5 squared pi r squared times the strength of the magnetic field which gives 0 0.471 newton meter the b part says does this device have any practical applications as a motor yes of course if it's arranged in such a way that it's able to rotate it will continuously keep rotating and uh, yes it has a practical application as a motor in question 8 the hot and neutral wires supplying DC power to a light rail commuter train carry 800 ampere and are separated by 75 centimeter what is the magnitude and direction of the force between 50 meter of these wires and B discuss the practical consequences of this force if any so here we have two cables the hot cable is the live one and then the neutral cable and the distance between them is 75 centimeter and it, the live one carries 800 ampere what's the magnitude and direction of the force between 50 meter of these wires so this is where you talk about two conductors kept parallel to each other each one is situated in the magnetic field created by the other one excuse me so a force will act on it and this force is given by mu naught by 2 pi i1 i2 in fact by by the distance but look at this left hand side it's it's the force acting on one meter that's given by this formula so since we are asked to find the force acting on 50 meters this length will have to be taken to the right side when it becomes a multiplication and then you would get hold on so what's the value of mu naught mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 it is the permeability of free space times the current in both 800 ampere so we're going to write 800 times 800 or 800 square and 50 is the length that's come over to the other side and goes to the numerator divided by the distance between them is a 75 centimeter which is 0.75 meter which gives us 8.53 newton now this force is a repulsive force and therefore it makes sure that these cables stay away from each other you know it's a repulsive force and that ensures that there is no short circuit between them that is there is no chance of these cables touching each other so that repulsive force acts as a security to make sure that these cables never touch each other. It was a long straight wire near a rectangular current loop. So we have a long straight conductor and a rectangular loop kept nearby. What is the direction and magnitude of the total force on the loop? See the loop is going to be situated in the magnetic field produced by the current flowing through the straight conductor 
that's why a force is going to act on it so this is the diagram diagram given so you have the straight conductor here carrying current from left to right and this is the rectangular loop here in which again there is a current flowing as shown so using the right hand rule we can see that the forces on each side are as given force on this side is down this side is to the right here is to the top and here is to the left so now we have to find the direction and magnitude of the total force we know that the force F1, which is the force acting down, is given by this formula. You know, I1, I2 by 2 pi R1, and that is the force on each meter. So we'll just take this length as 1 meter because the length of this is not given, right? So I1 is 30 amperes, that's given in the diagram, but uh, I, I forgot to show that here, so I've written it down the values of the currents are given i1 which is the current through this is 30 ampere and i2 is 15 ampere so when we plug it into the equation uh, we get this as the first force acting all right and now i've multiplied it with 0.3 because the problem also gives the length of the loop on this side as 0.3 now, what is this point 0 0.075? That is the distance between them, which is also given in the diagram. So quite a lot of information is not shown in the diagram, but these are all given. So that's why you get F1 as that. And now to find the force on F2, what do you think it will be? Again, we use the same formula. The distance now is point 0.175. Point 0.175 is the distance. The currents are 15 and 30, same as before, and we get 1.54. So we have F1 and F2, and therefore F total is F1 minus F2, which is going to be 2.06 times 10 to the negative 4 Newton. So let me explain this a little more, more detailed. Uh, F1 is actually this force. F2 is this force. So that's why when we calculated F2, we had to take the distance as this total distance, which would be the length here plus the 0 0.075. That is why the distance is 0 0.175. All right. Now, these two forces are opposite, but they are not equal. F2 is uh, much smaller than F1 because this part is at a longer distance. But when it comes to F3 and F4, they are not only opposite, but they are also equal. Therefore, they cancel out. So F3 and F4 cancel out. F1 and F2 are opposite, but they do not cancel. F1 is bigger than F2. So to find the net force, we have to find the difference between them, which is what I've done here, which gives us 2.06 times 10 to the negative 4. In question 10, non nuclear, non -nuclear submarines, submarines use batteries, batteries for power, power when, when submerged. submerged. Find, find the magnetic, the magnetic field 50 centimeter from, from a straight, straight wire carrying 1200 ampere, ampere from the batteries, batteries to, 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 to the drive, drive mechanism, mechanism of a of submarine. A submarine. So, so the, the, the current, current that flows, flows is 1200 ampere, ampere. and we and got we to got find the magnetic, magnetic field 50 centimeter from the straight, straight conductor. conductor. So you know so that, that a straight, straight conductor, conductor always produces a magnetic field that is circular around, around it. it. But as but you as move you away from the conductor, the conductor, the magnetic, the magnetic field, field becomes smaller. smaller. And the magnetic field is given by this formula, mu naught i by 2 pi the distance. the distance. Okay, the distance of the point. Mu naught is again 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. I is the current, which is 1200 ampere. And then 2 pi times the distance is 50 centimeter, which is 0.5 meter. When we do that, we get 
4.80 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. Now in the B part, it says what is the field if the wires to and from the drive mechanism are side by side? That's interesting because you have you got to have two cables, one carrying the current to the drive mechanism and the other bringing the current back. You know that's how the circuit is completed. So since the currents are flowing in opposite directions, they produce magnetic fields that are opposite to each other, thus they cancel out. So for the B part, what is the field? The field is nothing, they cancel out. No field exists. And then C says, discuss the effects this could have for a compass on the submarine that is not shielded. Well, it's not going to produce any effect because the magnetic fields produced by the two cables have cancelled out. So the compass will not be affected. The compass will show the correct direction. It's hard saying to see why an MRI utilizes iron to increase the magnetic field created by a coil. Calculate the current needed. So first of all, let me tell you that if you just have a coil with no iron inside it, it's not going to produce a big magnetic field. So that's what this uh, problem is talking about. Because here you have a 400 loop per meter circular coil. So every meter has 400 loops and the radius is 0 0.660 meter. And we uh, have to create a magnetic field of 1.20 Tesla. Okay, at its center. And the, the formula for magnetic field at the center of a circular coil is mu naught n i. Mu naught n i. This is a solenoid. And uh, so we have to know that n here is the 400 loops per meter. Okay, it's the number of turns in one meter, that's 400. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7, which is the permeability of free space and b is given so we have to find the current rearrange to find the current as b by mu naught n all right so mu naught is there n is the number of turns in one meter here it's specifically mentioned that 400 is the number of turns in one meter so we get this current 2.39 times 10 to the 3 ampere and then the B part says for the proton, the magnetic field is approximately like that of a circular current loop of that radius carrying that current. What is the field? So this is again making us repeat the same formula. And uh, except that we are given a new value of current produced by the proton circulating. And then you're also given a new radius. So it's the same formula basically and then we get the magnetic field due to the proton uh, to be 1.02 times 10 to the 13. That's a really strong magnetic field because it's uh, looping in a very small radius. As you can see, the radius is really extremely small. So the proton is moving so fast. And uh, you see, that's why, and that's why the current produced is so huge. That's, that's why we end up with a big magnetic field. It says, how strong is the magnetic field inside a solenoid with 10,000 turns per meter that carries 20 ampere? Again, the number of turns per meter is given. So if the number of turns was given as 10,000 in two meters, then we should have used the number in one meter as 5,000, right? But here it's 10,000 per meter. So we can directly plug it into the formula, which is B is equal to mu naught Ni, where N is the number of turns in one meter. And so that's mu naught. 10,000 is the number of turns. I is the current, which is 20 ampere. And you get the strength of the magnetic field on the axis of a solenoid to be 0.251 Tesla. And again, I hope that you understood how these problems have been worked out. Uh, see, when you look at it, it looks like you're just plugging in numbers into formulas. But remember, you got to know what each term stands for, 
what the angles stand for, got to know the units, which means you have to have a basic idea of the concepts in this chapter. I hope you got it. Uh, you know, you've watched the video of the lecture and prepared yourself to take that exam. Thank you.